What the f is going on in the market? Hey guys, this is Tyler Bogert with Spire Realty Group, and I also have my trusty sidekick, Justin. On, on today's video, we're gonna go over what the f is happening in today's market. Every year, it's a common question we get asked what's the market gonna do? I personally don't have a crystal ball, but I do have some helpful resources to help us give you the best guesstimate that we can to predict the future. We're going to drop some link in the descriptions for all of you to check out, and let's get into it. The housing market is very broad and contains a bunch of different variables, so we're going to break it down starting with the national level. Mm -hmm. There was a crash in 2008. How did that affect the market? Yeah, so obviously everyone remembers the 2008 har um, housing market crash, right? Yep. So that, we're still seeing impl implications of kind of where we are now because of the 2008 crash. So some of the variables that are coming into play is obviously, you know, a lot of uh, new construction builders as well as investors lo uh, lost a lot of confidence in the market back in 08, 09. Yeah, know, well, I mean, crash. the prices drastically changed after the right. 2008 crash. It was like a 30 or 50% decrease in market value. So yeah. I, I, I mean, I personally lose a lot of confidence if I lost like 30 yeah. to 50 percent of any kind yeah. of margin that you were thinking about getting right so yeah well that and a lot of them went out of you know obviously in the crash a lot of builders bankruptcy. went out of business yeah. bankruptcy yeah. you know a lot of builders went you know bankrupt they lost their businesses a lot, obviously a lot of investors lost a ton of money right. so it's t you know so since in that initial five to seven year period right where the 2008 crash and and most of the united states was recovering from the crash right we just weren't building a whole lot, right? Because people were not fully understanding or sure of the market yet. And so, you know. And that's why we're still acting in a like supply and demand deficiency yes. present day, because we're still short like three to five million homes yeah. present day, right? Yeah, majorly deficient on the amount of homes needed to actually supply right, people. Right, 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 right. So what are some other val uh, variables you see that you think is affecting our market today in 2022? Yeah, so obviously we covered supply and demand, right? right. So we're just, yep. like you said, short of three to five million homes. Yep. Uh, B is COVID. COVID. Yeah, COVID's a huge one. Yeah. What about, what? I think the biggest thing that I see that COVID has affected is remote work. Yeah, big time. So we have like this great migration of mm -hmm. buyers that can literally live wherever they want because yep. they can work from their home. Yeah. You want to touch on that a little bit? What do you see, like, is that going to continue happening or? Right, I mean, obviously, People are obviously seeing the great, what I call the great migration right. of, you know, and it is one of the largest migra migrations mm -hmm. in the United States history of people moving, and that is because of technology has basically allowed us and these businesses to allow their workers to continue working right. through COVID, right? And it's not even just workers. I mean, you have remote learning with your kids, right. and you can pretty much do anything from your home. Right. And, and so, you can live wherever you want. Yeah, and so now. As long as you got internet. People are now, instead of, moving to places where they have to work because they have to be in an office, now they can live in places where they want to live, be closer to family, right. be closer to places they grew up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you love the outdoors, you know, we're seeing a lot of international and national buyers come to, you know, obviously here in Alaska because people who don't want the big city or who want the hunting and fishing and all of the outdoor sports right outside their back door are obviously right. coming here, yeah. right? And that's what we're seeing all across the United States. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, obviously COVID politics, you know, no matter what your feelings are, are, yeah. are, impl are also having some kind of implications to the movement of population growth yeah, as well. Yeah, because people want to be around like-minded people when it comes to different right. political views. Right. Totally get that. What, why are we seeing prices increase? Like every year since 2008, we've seen about a 6.5% gain every year in market value. What's kind of driving that price, in your opinion? Yeah, so I mean, um, every you know micro market, you know, city and state are going to have different gains. You know, obviously, some places like Texas and Florida and and Idaho and Nevada and uh, Arizona are seeing like double digit double digit gains into the you know twenty thirty percent right. you know year over year growth, and because they have so many people moving to those areas, so it kind of comes in a supply and demand. But on top of it, you know, really. 
especially in the last two years, has been interest rates have been historically low yep. compared to where they have been. I mean, at one point in the past six months, we saw interest rates in the twos. Now we're kind of leveled out. Even in the, the low twos. Yeah, we're yeah. One, in the even the high ones. Yeah. So, I mean, we some of us know each percent, one percent of interest rates about $40,000 in buying power. So right. you look back in 2008 when interest rates were about 6% to present day, that's $120,000 in buying power. Yeah, it's a way substantial. So it, it moves people from different brackets of home buying, you know, for the exact same payment, someone who was a, you know, a condo or a town home buyer, especially in this market, is now moving into a single family home. They're moving into from a single family home that, you know, that's a starter home into now that dream home, yeah. right? Yeah. And people are downsizing, right? Able to downsize, get top market value for their home, mm -hmm. downsize and move across the country, have a lot of equity that's been built up just from the last few years. Right. And then apply that to a vacation home, an investment property. So you're seeing a lot of this, the kind of this cash movement across the real yeah, estate market. Yeah, so it goes right back it's, to the whole great migration. Like yeah. everybody's kind of changing hands, and it's not only just moving. There's all kinds of different variables. You, I mean, with equity, with the market value going up, mm -hmm. you're getting all this extra money to kind of do whatever you want with. Yeah, and it's it's tremendously changing the prices. So that comes to the big question on the national level: What do you see for 2022? Yeah, I mean, obviously, with the national level and with interest rates, even though they are starting to go up because the feds are yep. did announce rate hikes this year. Yeah, you know, four of them, I think they said. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. we were already starting to see that shift with uh, interest rates, right? But we're still at a major deficit mm -hmm. of housing across right. the United States. We're still, like you said, three to five million houses short, mm -hmm. right? And so the supply and demand feature of of all these homes, right? in the lack of homes is even if interest rates go to 5%, I still think you're going to have multiple offers. I still think you're going to have a major, you know, buyer pool that is needing housing and not enough inventory to, to supply it. Yeah, so, so we're still we're still in the low the low inventory. The low inventory is really what is getting yeah. us even if the interest rates go up a little bit. It's just going to move the buyer pool down a little bit in price range, but mm -hmm. they're still going to be trying to purchase those right. homes. They're still we don't have those homes. A ton of buyers, yeah. We don't have those homes. Buyers, so so uh, I agree with you with that. I think uh, we're still going to be acting in a supply and demand deficiency. We're going to have low inventory, and I expect the prices to kind of still increase a little bit, but mm -hmm. I don't see them increasing that 6.5%. Yeah, I mean, we'll see, right? It's yeah. like you said, we don't have a crystal ball or anything. Right, right, right. right but, right. Uh, you know, and every market's different, right? So when we talk about percentages, you know, we can't, yeah, you can't pinpoint. We can't it. pinpoint percentages, right? Right. Because you know, Texas, their their growth rate is going to be way different than Alaska, right? So, right. Um, which, I guess, brings us down to our what? local market yeah, here. Yeah, what's the local market going to do? Right. I mean, just from today, we only have 141 active listings in right. the municipality of Anchorage. Statewide, we have about 617. Which is super low. And, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. there's the population of. Uh, people above the age of 18 is 430,000 people. Right. So you have 617 active listings around the state of Alaska. I would say we're pretty low on inventory. Yeah, I mean, across, of course, with that too, is Alaska is a very transient population group. You know, right. we have oil, we have healthcare, military. We have a massive amount of military in Alaska because we are a strategic location right. in the world, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as far as, you know, military needs, right? Mm -hmm. And so... And then tourism is a huge, huge deal too. Tourism I mean, as well, people coming, right. coming and going. And mm -hmm. most of those tourism, the people that actually come to work our tourism season, because we have a lot of seasonal workers, right? right? Most of them end up staying. Right. A good portion of them do. Yeah. You know, and so it's with all this transient population group, you know, we just don't don't quite have, like I said, the inventory is super low, you know. Um, you know, I did some comparables for uh, a client the other day, and it was, you know, just in the municipality of Anchorage, you know, th there was only 30 homes below between 350 and 700,000, which is, which is insane, right? That's nuts. So inventory is just super low. It Once again, even on a national level and – you know, to now a, a, a kind of micro level of just Alaska, South Central Alaska, et cetera, right? We are st we are also seeing the effects of, you know, supply and demand, and that mm -hmm. is just not enough inventory, not enough supply to associate with the buyer pool that is present. Right? Yeah, so, I mean, with that being said, we haven't been really affected by those economical um, events like right. the crash in 2008. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we didn't really see that big of a deficit after the 2000 right. cra 2008 crash. No. Uh, what, I mean, do you see that ever happening? Like, are we going to follow those national trends of like the economical uh, events deficiting the right. Alaska market at all? Um, you know, we we do follow a little bit, but not nearly at the level at the level of what right. the lower 48, right, or the contiguous United States does. You mm -hmm. know, Alaska and Hawaii are very unique in the fact that we are just so removed and so separated that right. we are kind of our own little 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 economy. Yeah. We are kind of one of the more wealthier states, and we are very self sufficient in that, right? Mm -hmm. And so, in the 2008 crash, we only saw like a 1.5 to 1.7 decrease in home value, which is crazy because, right. like I just said, like there was 30 to 50 percent decrease nationwide right in alaska yeah. we saw 1.5 like that's peanuts to it, it is like yeah. nothing and you know that's because you know like i said it's the, the market is our local market as i say and i say that as alaska as a whole right right it's just so far removed from the federal and level it's so tiny yeah you know um so it takes massive population movement in or out right. for us to experience um, you know, some kind of event where it's going to majorly increase or majorly decrease housing. And right? I think the only, so, the one thing that I can really think about that kind of really affected our market was mm -hmm. the oil crisis right. in 2005, or was it 2015, 15, 2016? 16, yeah. Yeah, which affected it like three and a half percent. Right. Which is a big deal for our yeah. little market, right? right? Yeah. But during that time, too, is, you know, like I said, we would have to have some kind of movement of population group to really kind of uh, impact our market. Right, and the reason why we saw three and a half percent decrease in in home values is because of labor. Like they were cutting people off the slope left and right. right. And Look how many people left the slope. They had twenty thousand oh, yeah. job loss in the first six months of that. Right, I mean, and ten percent, ten percent of our population works on the oil field. Right. So you cut twenty percent. There's the three and a half percent decrease. Well, but, yeah, but it's just you know, part of that too is just um, also it's just you know a lot of those buyers, right, make really good money. It's yeah. pretty common for North Slopers to make six figures plus, right? right. And so if you remove 20,000 people from the pool of Alaska who make decent money, right, right and they all move to lower 48, or you have people who are no longer coming to Alaska because mm -hmm. that's where their jobs are, et cetera, right? I mean, that puts a big dent in the population of people who buy decent housing, right? right? Yeah, exactly. And so that's why, and because of that as a state, as an economic whole, was going through a recession, while the rest of the contiguous United States was going through a boom after the market crash, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, we're just so we're far removed that. I mean, we're three thousand miles away from anything. Right. So even if you wanted to move to another. So that impacted us yeah. more yeah. than the federal level as right. far as the market crash, right? Because right. It, the, uh, the oil in our economy impacts us far more greatly because we are so isolated, mm -hmm. right? And so you know. So do I see something like that happen in the future? I mean, you know, obviously oil is doing great, but yeah, it's, you know. it's coming up again, so that's mm -hmm. good. That's really good. What about prices? I mean, in, from 2019, the uh, median house price in Alaska, talking about median prices, mm -hmm. was 372. In uh, 2020, it was 390, uh, yeah, 396. Yeah. Now in 21, we just got done with 21, it jumped all the way up to 420. Right. Like, what do you expect is going to happen on price-wise yeah. with market or house values? House values, I think, are going to continue to increase, you right. know, because, um, you know, with supply issues, right, supply and demand, it's, it's basic economics, yeah. right? If you have multiple people who are pushing the price up because you're getting multiple offers, you have way more interest in housing, right, mm -hmm. than what is available, it's, it's going to cause prices to rise. Now, if in the event that interest rates continue to rise to a point where the buyer pool stops buying homes, right, right. Now you have a seller pool, and you move from a seller's market into more of a buyer's market because now sellers are having to compete for the same buyer versus the buyer buyers are, yeah. are having to compete for one singular home, right? right. So, but I don't see an inventory getting any better. Obviously, well, right I mean, now it it's slow. A, it would take a lot of right. inventory to actually get that influx where mm -hmm. it would go from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Yes. It would take a, I mean, we're so short labor, like there's not right. enough people to even build those homes. Right. So I don't, I agree with you. I don't see any, any kind of change in the way the market has been going. I think yeah. it's going to continue to be a seller's market. I do see prices continuing to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, do, I just don't, I don't see it changing at all. No, I, I, like I think we're, you know, we're, we're averaging between six and 9% per year. 
um, depending on, on the growth and whatnot. And so I think we're I think this year is just going to continue following the same trend, mm -hmm. even with interest rates going up. Um, you know, we do move from the historically low rates back to kind of somewhat normal rates. Right. You know, hovering around the four mm -hmm. or five percent mark. You know, yeah. which which is normal. I don't think that's going to prevent people from buying. Mm -hmm. You know, it may make um, you know what their their price point is may be yeah, reduced it might drop a little their bit. Price point a little but bit, but it's not going to change. I, much. It's, yeah, it's not going to change a whole lot. I don't think so. Don't, that's my yeah. opinion. Yeah. So to wrap that up for the local, I love percentages. You want to take a bet? I'm th I'm thinking for 22, it's going to increase four percent. That's Val it. Value. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? It's on camera, so we're gonna have this bet going for the whole year. <laughs> I'm gonna say we're gonna, we're gonna be pretty pretty on far. I'm not, you know I'm gonna say nine percent. Nine percent, really? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. All right. Well, that's our video. That kind of wraps everything up: the national level and the short, uh, the local level. If you guys like to see some more content, drop a comment, and you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe button. Just whatever you can hit. Click All the it. buttons. All the buttons. <laughs> Until next time. Losing time, I'm fading fast. I just wanna make it last. Try to let go of the past. I close my eyes, embrace the blast. Sleepless nights and headaches stack. Restlessness to hell and back. What's my purpose with